वेलकम टू प्री फैब्रिकेटेड स्ट्रक्चर्स मॉड्यूल टू एंड दिस मॉड्यूल इज रिलेटेड टू प्री फैब्रिकेटेड कॉम्पोनेंट इन दिस वी विल सी रिलेटेड टू लार्ज पैनल कंस्ट्रक्शन सो वॉट आर द मटीरियल्स रिक्वायर्ड फॉर लार्ज पैनल कंस्ट्रक्शन आर सेम एज द कन्वेंशनल कंस्ट्रक्शनल मटीरियल इट सेल्फ ओनली that is cement sand and aggregate so we can also do this easy and smart way with the smartphones to understand what is large panel constructions construction is a time consuming labor intensive process builder needs to bring together all of the necessary materials and skilled workers to complete the project successfully within a given time and uh, particular frame in one way to make the process easier and by using prefabricated components why prefabricated components means we need to understand the prefabrication if large amount of constructions are there there we can use the same type of materials for the prefabrications wherein the direct part of materials can be used these type of materials panels are also known as sometimes pre built walls or large wall panels so large wall panels are another name for the large panels or we can say pre built type of panels the simple way of classification of pre cast wall panel is based on their size or the material of which they are made of clear so classification of precast wall panel the simple way of classification of precast wall panel is based on their size or material of which they are made they can be easily classified according to the size as small and large or narrow vertical stirrups or as a broad horizontal bands the material that are used for precast wall panel are brick hollow clay blocks normal density concrete lightweight concrete metal gypsum plastic and timber so these all are the materials so here in the figure we can see so this is one type of a large panel itself only and one more figure which is of a hollow clay brick so this is also used sometimes as a precast so this material is already precasted which is prefabricated we say so this materials all are prefabricated in this we can see the openings for the door and windows are open and for the resting of slab panels we are able to see the uh, groove is provided for the uh, resting of the joint between the wall panel and the slab panel materials so these are the materials are locally available or which can be easily obtained are used for the production of precast walls that is prefabrications due consideration is also given to the structural and physical properties of the materials because the materials which we are going to use if they are not good enough or they are not able to sustain the load which is able to come on them or the load which they have to carry that load is not enough to carry by them then the particular material will not be considered for the construction material so in this is similar also in the normal uh, construction as well as for the precasted or prefabricated construction so the particular respective to strength thermal and sound insulation properties and also with the economy that is relative cost of the materials construction in large panel construction the load bearing the load bearing wall may be laid out they either perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the building cross wall or parallel to the spine wall system so how to do this particular thing we can say 
a mixed system consists of cross wall and a spine wall system spine wall means the in between wall which is coming spine wall is the main wall which will be coming directly so we can say the external walls are called as a spine wall system in the prefabrication and the partitions are known as the cross wall systems clear the most vertical load carrying elements transfer their loads directly to the foundation without an intermediate frame so intermediate frames are nothing but the cross walls sometimes they may not be there also sometimes they are directly loaded by the spine walls this type of construction is taken place also another classification of precast wall which is specially application to the prefabricated construction is based on their function and location in the building they can also be distinguished of their cross sectional characteristics as regards their location the wall panels may be classified as exterior or interior location walls depend on their functions they may be either structural means load bearing type or non structural means non load bearing type elements they may be solid sandwich hollow core or composite structure construction they can be either pre stressed or conventionally reinforced material used so we can say the composite such as hollow core we have already seen that the open hollows are provided or some material like a sponge is provided as a sandwich and composite construction is the thing of composite construction where steel and masonry are taken into place or other materials are pre stressed by pre stressing tendons or conventionally reinforced means the normal method of conventional reinforcement is taken place classification of precast large panels so how this precast large panel is further classified they are classified as cross wall system or longitudinal wall system cross wall system in this scheme the cross wall are loaded bearing walls whether the facade will wall or non loading bearing this system is suitable for high rise buildings so the facade which is the facade wall we can say this is the particular part of external part of wall we can say this is not a load bearing type this is a non load bearing means this will not take a load only the frames external type of frames will be provided if we see some of the glass cladding is provided that glass cladding is known as the facade wall which is only protective for the wind or any obstructions which are trying to come from the outside that type of walls are known as cross wall system in the precast large panels longitudinal walls in this case cross walls are non load bearing whereas longitudinal walls are load bearing walls this system is suitable for low rise buildings so very low height buildings are there there we are using the longitudinal wall system a combination of above system with all load bearing walls also can be adopted means for low rise buildings we can take longitudinal system wall that is the spine wall and cross walls the particular cross system walls only in the large high rise buildings the columns will be taking the loads in precast that are also the precast columns will be taking the loads so precast columns how they will be taking the loads because whatever the slab load is coming which is transferring to beam or the wall panel whatever load is coming it will be connected to column joints beam joints and the floor roofing joints which will again transfer the load to the column so most important thing in the precasts are load taking capacity of the column and design and quality of the columns further we can say this classification as homogeneous wall and non homogeneous wall what are the homogeneous wall either the homogeneous wall should be solid hollow or ribbed solid means the similar rcc concreting how we do for the slabs the similar type of solid panel will be able to seen that is the homogeneous wall hollow means material is similar but intersections whichever the intermediate hollow 
hollow why it is done to reduce the dead load of the concrete over the solid state ribbed they can be also changed into the curvature types or they are provided with something a uh, reinforcement type that is known as ribbed type of precast lars panels so this comes under the homogeneous wall type and non homogeneous wall type are these could be a composite or sandwich panels sandwich panels based on structural functions of the walls the wall could be classified as load bearing non load bearing or shear walls so these are the three types under the non homogeneous walls why load bearing load bearing they may be of a conventional type or they may be supported to directly to the ground which are not a homogeneous type they can be of a glass they can be of a steel or other type non load bearing is again the same type which has mentioned the facade wall or a glass cladding like that shear walls are provided sometimes to carry loads sometimes not to carry the loads these are the classification of precast panels classification based on location and functional requirements so how large panels are there external walls are there internal walls are there external walls which can be load bearing depending upon the layout based upon the layout means the plan is going to decide whether the external walls will be taking the loads or they are not able to take the loads and are usually non homogeneous walls of sandwich type to impart better thermal comforts these are of somewhat called as the sandwich type because we require the temperature inside the room has to be maintained it should not get disturbed by the external temperature so external if there is a cold internal there should be a humid type if external humid is there internal somewhat it should be cold type the temperature should not be disturbed by the external temperature itself internal walls will be providing resistance against vertical loads horizontal loads fire etc and normally homogeneous walls so we have seen the small partitions of 4 inch walls by brick which we are constructing in normal construction so here also we can provide the prefabricated or precasted as a vertical load transferer and horizontal load transferer also as a partition type of fire uh, resistance and normally these are known as homogeneous because there is no provision of any sandwich type of wall or hollow wall or the ribbed type of wall or any other non load uh, load bearing type of walls thank you see you in the next video this was related to prefabricated large panels so large panels are somewhat as the further so further will be related to same prefabricated components thank you see you in the next video